Hi guys, Nine here with version 0.1 of my Artifact 2.0 beta review. I want to go through some of the main changes done to the game while altogether ignoring cards and game modes. Most mechanics are deeply interconnected and it's hard to kind of individually dissect them, so instead of a pros and cons list or likes and dislikes, I'm gonna somewhat just let my thought process kind of flow. Please bear in mind this is just my own opinion and it's an ongoing process, it's been changing over time, it's far from settled and it's not completely consolidated, but I think it's worth sharing anyway. Artifact 1.0 was a 3 serial board game. This placed paramount importance on lane 1 and this was seen as a problem in the community and corrected towards 3 simultaneous board play in 2.0. So basically we play the 3 lanes at the same time. I have so far liked this change far more than I expected to like it in the first place. Complexity has shifted from the interlane denial and initiative system to kind of more intrinsic at sequencing and still feels challenging in a good way, I think. It has, however, created a few other issues, which I'm for the most part going to refer to as kind of side effects. The implementation of a single mana pool together with the zoomed out view uh, of the three boards. I think retracts from the three board feeling that used to exist. In other words, it feels like one very large board, and I think brings Artifact much closer to the larger crowd of previously existing card games. So I think it retracts from some of its like personality and what set it apart from the crowd to begin with two years back. Three lane simultaneous combat and play um, kind of had the perverse effect of increasing draws which actually, according to Dota lore, shouldn't happen that often, but that's besides the point. I think, though, this is where the weirdness kind of begins. A few things have changed that have seemed to only exist to correct some perverse game design side effects. Combat now alternates from left to right and vice versa. It seems a bit unintuitive at first glance and kind of weird, although you obviously understand why. Shop has been reworked to prevent a handful of uh, pre-existing complaints, mainly, you know, going rampant on gold and buying the whole shop. Or getting access to very expensive items very early in the game. Mana was added to all the items and activated abilities. And since mana was severely reduced in this new version of the game and late game spells were nerfed, mana and items feel way more constricting than they used to be. Because of this, a courier mechanic was added, which uh, kind of feels in my opinion, flavorless and is strangely out of place right now. So I think this is kind of another strange side effect that currently needs a solution that is a bit more elegant and refined, if you will. Something else that the team uh, has uh, worked on in order to reduce the impact of deployment errors and also lane denial that was a problem in 1.0 uh, is that a lot of mobility was impl implemented into the game. This confers kind of a more dynamic gameplay sensation, which I appreciate for the most part. It is nevertheless interesting that in 1.0, denying a lane presence would have a severe impact in terms of tempo and ability to play mana and progress the game plan. Whereas with a shared mana pool, it feels much less that way, as you can still spend all your mana elsewhere if one lane gets denied, or you can just jump back in and spend mana there again with some other hero. Seemingly concerned with this, I think Valve added a lot of movement abilities while nerfing things like Blink Dagger, both in terms of gold cost and overall mobility. And simultaneously, they added the Blink Scroll mechanic, which activates at an arbitrary 50% HP tower reduction. And I think much like the Courier and the alternating combat direction, this leaves a strange taste in my mouth. It doesn't tie in together somehow, and it feels, uh, again, kind of arbitrary and uh, strange. More importantly, however, I think these solutions seem to have, ironically, made middle lane kind of the new left lane, if you will. Blink Dagger, Blink Scroll, Timber Saw's ability, Anti-Mage's ability, Sand King's ability, they all allow you to move, but they allow to move to an adjacent lane. So there are some exceptions to this, like Nyx Assassin, who can move all over the board, but for the most part, you are not able to switch from left lane to right lane. And this means that mid lane is much stronger. Is this good or bad? Uh, I don't know. 
I feel like by solving one issue, several other issues have arisen. And uh, again, one might say mid lane is the new left lane. Card draw and hand size limit, I think, are also important to touch on, as I feel like they are in a strange place right now in terms of balance, where my games keep switching or swinging from being very short on cards to being severely overdrawn. If, you, if you're not aware, go check out some games where people overdraw. It is a, a bit of a strange mechanic uh, right now, and I think it needs to be addressed. So if nothing else, I hope we can get rid of the 10 card hand size limit, or at least make it not count items, I think. But at the end of the day, I can't keep from wishing that I was back on three mana pools and double card draw per turn. It seems kind of impossible to make a thorough analysis without getting lost in all the ramifications of, of design. I, I think Valve's heart is in a great place and they will do what it needs what needs to be done. It, it might be that what it takes is not what I really wish on a personal level, and that's okay if it pleases the majority and the game becomes successful. But I think I wanted to end this on a kind of a nicer note of asking you guys how you feel, because whether you're in the beta or not, uh, I really I urge you to all give your opinion and your feelings. Give your first impression, your third impression, your 100 hour impression, it doesn't really matter. Because I think right now is when we as a community need to be close together and hope that we do the best for the game so that the game gets to the place where it deserves to be. So yeah, make your, make your own voice heard, guys. Email valve, artifact, beta feedback at valvesoftware.com. Share your thoughts. And if you're not in the beta yet, I wish you all the luck uh, in getting your key soon and that you all get in as soon as possible, guys. Thanks for watching.